We are live. We are live. We are live. Welcome into the I am the possible universe. Guys, this is not a podcast episode. Nope, just a live stream. But I got some great information for you. Guys, I hope and pray that wherever you are on this Tuesday morning, afternoon, or evening, whenever you are tuning in, whether it's live or on the replay, I hope and pray, guys, that um, you are striving in your own way to improve a little more the way you see yourself and the way that you show up in this world. Today, guys, I'm going to share with you um, something that I've been dealing with all my life, something that I think you've been dealing with all your life, something that's been riding under the radar or flying under the radar, I should say. It normally goes unnoticed, unknown, unseen, but this thing just creates all types of havoc in our lives. And I'm going to expose and explain some things in the next 20 minutes that I hope and pray you would receive, that you would consider, and that you would find a way to integrate into your life, to improve your life in general. So guys, this, this episode or this, this live stream is really for anyone who continues, um, you know, facing and dealing with cycles of issues or problems that just continue to present themselves. They may not come like every day or every week, but they come pretty frequently. And you notice sort of a pattern. Every time this comes up, I feel this way. I address that issue this way. And I keep getting the same results. I keep getting the same outcome, right? And you you may be at a place in your life where you're you're really getting pretty tired, right? It's kind of getting old um, of going in circles and finding yourself over and over and over in these repetitive, um, habitual cycles uh, and, and just patterns of I face this thing, I feel this way, I respond this way, and it just keeps going the same way. And I either feel stuck, I feel like I can't defeat it, I feel like I can't overcome it, right? You name it, you frame it, you put it into your context, however you want to describe it. But there's a problem and you are at the point where you continue to think that the problem is that problem. And today I want to share with you your real problem. The real problem. My real problem. To open this up, I want to share with you um, a quick story. The other day, actually it was Sunday, Sunday afternoon, I was given this amazing opportunity to uh, deliver a keynote speech. And uh, it was for uh, this charitable organization. And, uh, and I, won't, I won't go into a lot of the specific details uh, because that's just kind of the way I create my platform. I don't like to drop names or give a lot of specifics um, just because this is on the internet and I'm just not that type of guy. But I, I think that the story and the context will give you enough flavor where you can understand it and where you can still relate to it. So um, just a charitable organization, I was given this opportunity to deliver this keynote message. And 30 minutes before I was to give this, this speech, I was faced with my problem. Something that, I don't know, have you ever had something that just punches you in the gut? Like there's an issue, maybe it's from your past, maybe it's something that you've dealt with before, um, but there's this thing in your life that maybe you haven't fully recovered from, you haven't fully gotten over, you're not delivered from it, but it, it's, it's something that just challenges you at your core, right? And so 30 minutes, excuse me, 30 minutes before I was to get up to speak. Now, this is in front of, you know, a nice size crowd. And, you know, obviously, I want to do a good job. I want to show up. I want I want to, you know, deliver, you know, value and and encourage these people. And so this was a moment where, you know, you want to be clear minded, you you want to be centered, you want to be able to really show up and present your your best self and your best material. So that that's sort of the the setup. And so 30 minutes, man, before this moment, 
that I was to get up and to be present with this audience, I was faced with something, an idea about something. I came face to face with one of those challenges that just punches me in the gut. And when I was faced with this issue, I was faced with the problem that I'm going to share with you in just a moment. See, I thought that I was dealing with this thing, but the more I reflect and the more I have been taught and the more I teach and the more I'm learning to now practice what I preach, the more I realize that's not really the problem. The real problem is what I want to share with you right now. Let me go ahead and share my screen. This is the real problem. Default conditioned judgments. Default conditioned judgments. See, this is something that flies under the radar. This is something that a lot of people don't talk about. We don't unpack. We don't, we don't, we don't really put it out front. I don't know if many of us are even comfortable with dealing with this because it challenges everything. Remember, I said I've been dealing with this since birth. And many of you have been dealing with this since birth because it is something that we are brought into. Right. The Bible says that, you know, we're we're born into sin. But I don't even want to go biblical. We're just born into a world of defaulted and conditioned thinking. These judgments about everything. And we're around people and we're in environments where we are constantly being programmed by what we experience, by what we witness, by what we hear. And see, the way that it works is unknowingly. We're not aware at seven years old. We're not aware at 12 years old. We're not aware at 20 years old that what I'm seeing, what I'm hearing, what I'm doing, what I'm experiencing. We're, 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 we're not aware that these things are having a profound impact in framing the way we think, in framing the way that we respond, in framing the way that we show up in the world. And then we have these emotionally charged events that stamp our minds with a negative imprint. And every time we're faced with that thing or something that presents itself as that thing, we're triggered and we respond the same way and we get the same results. I was faced with that, guys, 30 minutes before my keynote speech. I was faced with that 30 minutes. The thing that punches me in the gut, the thing that I've always defaulted to, I've always been conditioned to respond this way, to say this thing, to do this thing, to feel this way. It's something that the problem really ain't the problem. What's the problem? This is the problem. My thinking was defaulted. My thinking was conditioned. That was and is the problem. Now, let me unpack this a little bit for us. Have you ever heard of the term dualistic thinking okay if you are live drop it in the chat yes or no dualistic thinking if you're showing up on the replay drop it in the chat or drop it in the uh, comments i should say yes or no dualistic thinking if you haven't look it up man google it this is what it is though dualistic thinking assumes a a universe where there are only two contrasting mutually exclusive choices or realities this thinking is either or, it's good or bad, negative, positive, and has a powerful effect on our belief systems and actions. Duality blocks our progress. Guys, what does that mean? Dualistic thinking says when I see something, I'm going to pick a side. That's right. Republican, Democrat. Mm -hmm. The red states, the blue states. Mm -hmm. The devil, God, good, evil, up, down, yes, no, left wing, right wing, pro this, pro that, I'm this, I'm that, you're this, we're that, dualism. It is a way of looking at the world in two ways, 
And you have to constantly force yourself into choosing and picking a side. At the root, duel, fight. It's a duel. It's, it, it sets you up to be in opposition with someone else or with another group or with another organization, whatever it is. It sets you up to duke it out. It's a duel. It's a mental duel. And we're unaware of it. This is what America is. This is what half of the world is. We're dualistic. We wake up and we're just, even Christians, even the church, even the men and women of God, that's one of the reasons that, that cause us not to be distinctive from the world. When the world looks at the church, one of the reasons that they can't really discern any power and they really can't discern the presence of God is because many of us in the church or we as the church are still operating, me included, I'm, I'm putting my dirt out there, me included, we, we, we are by default. And this is no, listen, guys, this is not a dig on us. We, we didn't know any better. I didn't know any better. You don't know any better. It just happened. It, 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 it was just a part of the par, right? Par for course. We, we just didn't know. And so we're operating out of this dualistic mindset, this dualistic thinking and our behaviors and our words and the things that we're doing and, and the way that we're showing up is very dualistic. And we're picking sides because we got to prove our side right and we got to prove your side wrong. And the world is looking at the church saying, man, I, I don't see no different. We battling in rap. We battling in politics. We battling on, on Facebook. We're battling on Twitter. We're battling in, in this. We're battling in that. And they, they don't see very much difference. Now, I'm going to get off that soapbox. But that's that's what dualistic is. OK, that's that's so understand something. When I saw when I was faced with my problem, it really wasn't a problem. The problem, the real problem was I was operating out of dualism instantly. As soon as I was faced with that issue, my first mind was, oh, I'm going to pick this side. And this person did wrong. This person was wrong. I'm right. And that person, they're wrong. That was my instant defaulted thinking. And how many times, guys, how many times do we just default to our thinking without really thinking about what we're thinking? Let that soak in. How many times do we just think that we know what's what's going on? We think we figured it out. We think we know we got the tea. We got the whatever. And the truth is, we just operating out of the same thinking we was thinking yesterday. We ain't observed nothing new, nothing fresh. We have not entertained anything. We've not been enlightened. We've not been enriched. The truth is we're just working off the same old defaulted stinking thinking that we had 12 months ago, 12 years ago. Let's, let's just be honest. And I'm putting me out there to let you know our problems really ain't the problems. Our problems is our perception of the problem. One more thing I want to add, categorical thinking. Have you heard of categorical thinking? See, I'm exposing this to I want to take the veil off. I want to I want to, I want to start doing this more and more and more. I made a commitment to start doing these exposures more, but I haven't done them as much as I wanted to. But it's time to kick it in. It's time to start showing. It's time to start right taking the veil off and, and start dealing with some of this real stuff uh, and really pushing that out to the forefront so people can really start getting free because this is liberating information. This freed me up yesterday. This freed me up on Sunday. OK, and I'm going to get to the solution in just a moment. Moment. Categorical thinking. Categorical thinking encourages you to exaggerate differences across category boundaries. OK, that can lead you to stereotyping people from other groups, setting arbitrary thresholds for decisions and drawing inaccurate. That's key. Inaccurate conclusions. In other words, categorical thinking. You look at a situation from only a few ways or or a handful of categories. Oh, it's got to fit in this box. It's got to fit in that box. Oh, because I be, and again, going back to me. Oh, because I saw this or I'm I'm dealing with this. Oh, it has to fit into this box. And the truth is, maybe it don't fit into that box. Right. I'm sure you've heard this before. We don't see things as they are. We see them as we are. We don't see the world as it is. We see things as we is. Okay, that's my old 
personal twist on it, right? The truth is, though, we're looking through lenses of our own mortality. I call it lenses of limitations. You've limited your ability to perceive something and to accurately assess it and allow it to be what it is because we are, and when I say you, I'm just talking about humanity. We, we're all in this thing together, right? We, um, instead of being able to truly appreciate something for what it is and to really allow it to be what it is, we instantly judge it out of our framework, out of our mindsets, out of the way that we've been raised, out of the way mama and them did it and, and daddy and them did it and uncle and them did it and auntie and them did it. And auntie and them and uncle and mom and daddy, maybe they wasn't right. Maybe they didn't know no better. Maybe they were just operating on the same mindset that they parents did. And then theirs before them and then theirs before them. Just 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 maybe because here's the solution. As I wrap this up, how do we get out of this? Right. I'm exposing the problem. That's the real problem. The problem ain't the problem that's in front of you. The problem is the problem that's beneath the problem. It's your perception. It's the way that we're thinking about it. It's this categorical, dualistic thinking. That's the real problem. That's the real issue. That's what we need to really deal with. Now, how do we deal with it? Here it is. Bam. Observation, baby. Observation and opportunity. Observation and opportunity. What are we observing and what opportunity are we giving? Observation. That means to pause, to pump the brakes. And that's something that I literally had to do. Sunday, I had to pause and I had and I had to pump the brakes. I had to go outside. I had to breathe for a moment and I had to think to myself. Is there any other way to see this, to think about this? Holy Spirit. Touch my heart. Open my eyes. Is there any other way? Holy Spirit. I'm thinking about putting it in this category, categorical thinking. But could it go somewhere else? Holy Spirit, I'm thinking about judging this as this and picking a side. Is there a side for me really to pick right now? See, it's the power of the pause. I've taught this many, many times. The pause is powerful because many of us don't pause. Many of us have knee jerk reactions. We just knee jerk reactions, right? We just knee jerk. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, I feel this way. Oh, I see it this way. Oh, that this is what's up. Oh, that that's what's up, right? And we get in our feelings, right? And we feel some type of way. And maybe our feelings ain't accurate. And, right, you know, we feel in some type of way. Sometimes we need to figure out what that type of way is. That's a fascinating statement. I feel some type of way. I know it sounds dope, but have you ever really thought what is the type of way that you feel? Anyway, anyway, don't don't even worry about it. Don't even worry about it. Right. <laughs> OK, but but we just knee jerk. I see it. I respond. I see it. I respond. Oh, that's what's up. I respond. No, 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 no. If you're at the point where you're tired of just responding and getting the same results, you're tired of responding and having the same ending to this story. It's like Groundhog Day. If you want to break out of this cycle, we have to observe. We have to observe and we have to give an opportunity. So we observe it is for what it is. It's just simply pausing and saying, let me look at this for what it is. I know what I initially think, I initially feel, but is there anything else? And you are inviting God because sometimes he's the only one that can soften our hearts. We've been so calloused. We've been so beat up by this world. That we can't look to ourselves. We can't look to other people. We have to invite God himself to soften our hearts and to allow us to see it in a new way. So we observe it. What is this? Am I really dealing with what 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 what's really at hand right now? Not what I feel, not what I think, but what's really at hand. And then opportunity. Give yourself an opportunity to grow. Give yourself an opportunity to develop. Give yourself an opportunity to get past this. Give yourself an opportunity to think about this differently, to feel about this differently, to consider something differently, and then to, to bring about a, you know, a different outcome, a fresh new outcome. Give yourself that opportunity. So you're observing it. You're ex exercising the power of the pause. And then 
you're giving yourself an opportunity to see it differently, to respond differently. And this takes practice. I didn't even share with you really the framework for this. I'll share it in upcoming episodes and lives and podcasts. I'll really break this down, especially in this upcoming year. People are, you know, trying to have a great, you know, 2023. I think this is one of the keys to having a great new year and just having a great new life. Okay, is this thing called contemplation? You can look that up. Contemplation. But I'm going to be doing a whole episode on it. Contemplation. Okay, and contemplative prayer, contemplative prayer is just a practice of suspending these defaults and these conditioned ways of thinking and allowing life to become what Jesus said that he came for. I have come that they may have life to the full. And some of us are not having a life to the fool because we are either categorically thinking or we are either dualistically thinking and we are literally limiting our lives through the lenses from which we see our lives. I hope and pray that that makes sense. I hope and pray that that makes sense. Guys, I got to shut it down. Listen, I am the possible.com. I am the possible.com. If you guys are interested in reaching out to me, connecting, um, Anyone that's looking for um, a life coach, someone who needs that coaching, that mentoring, anyone who wants to connect with the podcast, um, anyone who wants to connect, bring me in as a speaker, um, just 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 anyone who wants to connect with me on a deeper level um, or who wants more information, just hit me up, man. I'm the possible dot com. I am the possible dot com. I got to go ahead and shut this down. Got to get it on for the day i was looking for my little slide but i don't have an extra slide uh for the information but again it's i am the possible sometimes um we have new new people watching and uh they haven't seen you know right all of my content they haven't seen uh the website and everything like that so again it's i am the don't forget the possible.com hit me up there hey quiet i'm live hey mm -mm, silent i'm live (laughs) that's the live life right um but listen love you guys Praying for you guys, believing in you guys. Until next time, this is Travel C. W. Lynch, Mister. What? What? And no, this is not the I'm the Possible Podcast Experience. No, 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 no. This is just a special live, just a live stream. Had to get this off my chest. Had to get this out to the world and put it out into the universe so that the right people at the right time might come across the right information to be inspired to make an investment in the innovation of their identity that's right guys i want you to innovate yourself and this is one of the ways that you can do it yep just like that changing this right here all right guys have an amazing tuesday hope and pray uh that you guys would be good to yourself be good to those around you and make it a great one peace